Remember all of those Christians who've been crying in the past couple of years for other Christians to obey the mandates? Well, the ground has crumbled beneath their feet. They have nothing left to stand on now. Welcome back to Good Monsters. My name is Cody Lawrence. I'm your host, and we're going to be talking about uh, looking back based on what we know now of uh, what a lot of the um, less faithful professing Christians have been saying and uh, compare that to um, what we see from them now. Interesting. Uh, it's very interesting to to see this and it should be enlightening. But first, I want to remind everybody that I have recently created a Patreon page. If you want to support me, you can go to Patreon. Uh, the username is Good Monsters. And uh, also, just so you know, if you just listen to the podcast, I also have an Instagram page where I post a lot of content uh, all the time. Go check that out. I also have a Facebook page that I'm trying to grow as well. Uh, in this age of censorship, it is valuable to be on as many platforms as possible. And, you know, if you want more content from me, you can find uh, more original content there. And if you're coming from Instagram or Facebook, uh, welcome. So glad you are following me on multiple platforms. I also recently made a gab, and I haven't really gotten into that yet. You know, it takes time to learn. I mean, not much time, but it takes a little time to learn a new platform. Um, so I've at least made an account. Um, Gab seemed really user-friendly, but if anybody has other recommendations for places to uh, upload my stuff, I'm making it anyway, so I might as well have other places to upload it, then just let me know. You can shoot me a message on Instagram. I'm also on YouTube, by the way, and so if you listen to the audio, you can see video on YouTube. Just look up Good Monsters Podcast. All right, let's get into it. And the ground crumbled beneath them, a Romans 13 reminder. So I want to set the stage here uh, for what has been happening the past couple of years. So for the past two years, and yes, it's been two years since the beginning of many of these ridiculous mandates, uh, started with the masks, then it moved into the vaccines. This whole time, many of the more rational people were saying, whoa, if you let them do this to you, then they're just going to start forcing you to take vaccines, and who knows what's next. Uh, and then those people were called conspiracy theorists. <laughs> well, uh, look at what happened. I have a sticker on my water bottle that says, Noah was a conspiracy theorist. I think that's a funny sticker. It's true. It's true. And uh, his family was the only one left alive on the planet. Uh, interesting. Okay, so for the past two years, a large group of professing Christians, um, a lot of ones calling themselves conservative, but most of them uh, seeming to be on the left, although, you know, a, a lot of them claiming to be conservatives. John Piper is one of them most recently. I made a video about his... Um, article encouraging people to get the vaccine. Um, very strange that a lot of these presumably conservative Christian people are encouraging other Christians to go along with the mandates. And I've also made lots of videos about uh, righteous civil disobedience. Um, and, and we'll get into more of that in just a bit because I, I don't even know if I would call it a civil disobedience because you're, you know, I don't know, if a stranger comes up to you on the street and says, you you have to wear this hat, um, is it civil disobedience to say no if he has no business asking you to wear that hat? Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we, we want to qualify our terms well. But anyway, a large group of Christians have been attempting to use Bible passages like Romans 13, 1 Peter 2, uh, Titus 3, to argue that we ought to obey every single command from the government, no matter what. 
And now a lot of us, we know better, but also those of us who want to take scripture seriously, we, you know, it's, it's hard when we hear things like this because we're like, well, I mean, the Bible says obey the authorities that are put over you. What's up with that? Um, these people also make qualifications to say, well, like we know you, you can take this too far. We know that, you know, uh, as long as it, as long as a command from the government doesn't cause us to sin, then, then we have to obey it because that's what the Bible says. We have to obey every single command, regardless of what it is, unless it causes us to sin. But one of the tricks is that's not what the verse says. <laughs> so if you can make an allowance like, well, unless it causes you to sin, then perhaps there are other allowances that should be made in the verse too. Maybe it, um, maybe it, we need to be more thoughtful about passages like Romans 13. Romans 13 being the most popular, but like I said, it's also in Titus 3 and 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, maybe there are other, other variables that enter into the equation when we are choosing to be obedient to the authorities that are over us. The Bible also defines a government as um, something that rewards good and punishes evil. And a lot of what's happening in America right now is exactly the opposite. So could you say if a government um, is, is totally on its head that it doesn't even fall into the biblical category of government and so you treat it uh, like it has no authority whatsoever because um, God has removed his... Um, his appointment of the government. These are some things that people say. Uh, other qualifications that they add to this. Um, it's like a, trying to appease the conservatives and, and it confuses um, many of us. And, it, and it's hard whenever they try to argue these things. But another qualification is, well, we need to be good representatives of the gospel. And so if we are perceived as rebellious, um, that's not good for God. And so obviously we want to be good representatives for God. And so just get the vaccine. Like, yeah, maybe there are risks involved, but isn't the greater risk a bad witness? These are tricky arguments. And I will argue that uh, these arguments that these people have been using, even from the Bible, is totally rooted in unfaithfulness. So if this is the first you're hearing of a lot of these things, I want to give you a few of the reasons uh, why these, um, these arguments for obeying anything the government tells you, maybe except for the fact that um, if it makes you sin, in their words, um, is a bunch of hogwash. Uh, that's, that's not what these verses are, are telling us to do exactly. So... I think that we've had reasons all along to believe that these arguments were grounded in unfaithfulness. But now, more than ever, something very unique and special, uh, a great blessing has happened that allowed us to see 100% that this stuff was grounded in unfaithfulness. But I want to go over some of the arguments uh, that we could have seen this whole time. And that many of us did see this whole time. And this is, these are uh, some things that I have been hearing and that I have been talking about for a long time. But I also want to uh, talk about something, something new uh, that, that sheds more light on the past. So one, Romans 13 and these other passages, they don't give the government unlimited power. This is something that we have uh, been arguing this whole time. A government can't just tell you to do anything it wants. Governments have a particular sphere of power that God appoints to them. Like God, the Bible says that God appoints leaders and God creates governments and governments is a good thing. Um, but there is a way that governments can overstep their sphere of influence that God gives them. God doesn't give governments unlimited power because there is only one being that has unlimited power. And that's God. Now, this same thing applies to, say, families. Uh, a family doesn't have unlimited power. There are three, um, I don't know what this doctrine is called exactly or, or what this uh, study is called, but basically there are three spheres of authority that God appoints. 
Uh, one is the family, one is the church, and one is the civil government. And each of these have a particular sphere of influence and sphere of authority. And sometimes these spheres overlap, uh, like, you know, the, the church can have perhaps some say over your family and your family can have some say over the government and the church and so on. Uh, but also some people say that that those spheres of influence don't intersect whatsoever. That, you know, when you're in church, the church does the things that they're supposed to do and your family has nothing to do with it. The government has nothing to do with it. Um, the government has nothing to do with what the church does or your family and so on. So some people think there's a small amount of overlap and some people think that there's no overlap at all. But no faithful Christian believes that the spheres can grow totally encompassing the others. And what we see in America and in many countries in the world is that the sphere of authority that the government believes it has is encompassing everything. That the government has total authority over whatever it wants, regardless of what the constitutions of those countries allow the government to have, and regardless of, uh, of what even God allows. And even Christians seem to, unfaithful Christians, even especially Christians on the left, uh, seem to be capitulating to this idea like, well, the Bible says obey the government. And, you know, I mean, the government, it's telling us to, you know, put put junk in our bodies through a needle or to uh, put cover our face in church. And so we got to do it because that's what the Bible says. Uh, I heard a, a wonderful analogy one time that is it, we are told to obey their, our parents. Uh, we have to be obedient children to our parents. We have to honor our father and our mothers. But if a father has gone crazy and is going to burn down his house, do faithful children say, well, that's what he wants to do. I'll let him do it. I don't think so. I think faithful children would restrain their father and not allow him to do that. They would, even though they are supposed to be obedient to their father, we recognize, you know, there's something obvious about that one not being something that a father actually has the authority to do. He doesn't he doesn't have the authority to tell his kids, don't do anything, let me burn down your house. Uh, usually. <laughs> Uh, so a good, obedient, submissive children in that case would have total, I mean, it would be totally within reason for them to restrain their father, which otherwise would be a totally unsubmissive and disobedient thing to do. Interesting. So we know that our, um, our responsibilities to God is greater than any responsibility to a kind of government on earth. We know that our responsibility to God is greater than um, our responsibility to obey the government or our parents or uh, our church even. If any of the, the uh, behaviors of any of those spheres of authority, the church, the family, the government, uh, steps on or exceeds or ignores the design that God has made for them, then they are to be resisted and ignored. I don't want to go too deeply into it because I have in the past gone deeper into these things. But the first argument is that uh, that we knew this this whole time. Uh, it's not new. We knew that these these arguments from these people were unfaithful two years ago when they first started saying them. One, because Romans 13 and these other passages, nowhere else in the Bible, gives the government unlimited authority. It just doesn't. Or any of the other spheres of influence. The church does not have unlimited authority. The Catholic Church back in the you know, 1500s believed that they had unlimited authority. They believed that they had God behind them. Our government today believes that they are God. That a God doesn't exist and that, well, somebody has to take the position of this big hole in the sky and that's us. Uh, and then in some families, you know, even even the, the father or the mother believe that they have ultimate authority and control and can do whatever they want over their kids or over other people uh, or, or whatever. So these things are just not simply not given to, 
to these uh, spheres of influence in the Bible. They're not. The second thing is that God grants us religious freedom. God, in other words, God gives us the, the, the uh, ability to make our own free choices. And governments also should allow us to do the same thing. In fact, what makes this argument even more powerful is that the American Constitution and that many other constitutions in the world uh, grant us religious freedom. Now, if God grants us something that a constitution takes away, we still have that thing. So, like I said, a constitution can't step on God's authority, but um, it can it can coincide. It can it can support. Uh, so not only does God give us this religious freedom, but our constitution actually recognizes that from God we have certain uh, inalienable rights given to us by our creator. And one of those rights is the freedom of religion. And um, because of that, a religion, uh, especially Christianity, uh, has a strong doctrine of conscience. We have to obey our conscience. And now, of course, uh, somebody's conscience could be broken. Our consciences are not perfect. Our consciences are not God. And if our conscience, um, if it is broken, leads us to do something evil, then our government does have the authority to either prevent us from doing that or to punish us when we do. Like if our conscience says, oh, I need to kill a bunch of people, then that's clearly bad. And, and that's not a, uh, a reason to do that bad thing. So we need to make sure our conscience is clearly calibrated um, because in that case, the government would 100% have the right to punish a person who does something uh, immoral or illegal, depending on the thing, um, like, like killing, for example, like murder. The government has the authority to punish that because that's punishing evil, right? Murder is evil. Um, but a, a correctly calibrated conscience can also tell us the things that we are free to do and the things that we are not free to do. For example, if the government is wanting us to do a certain thing that we feel we are not free to do in our consciences, then we are not free to do those things under God. The Bible says in multiple places that if, um, if you believe something is a sin, if it's a sin or not, and you do that thing, then you're sinning because you're sinning against your conscience. And our conscience, even if it is imperfect, is this tool that God gave us to uh, gauge morality, especially in areas wherever, where, where we are ignorant. Um, you know, the Bible gives us guidance on many things. And the more that we familiarize ourselves with God's word and the closer we are to God, I believe our, our conscience becomes uh, better calibrated. But, um, you know, we, we can also make mistakes with our conscience, like I said. Uh, but, but to go against our conscience is sinful nonetheless. And these mandates and these Christians saying, no, you, you should get the vaccine is doing something called binding someone's conscience. Uh, you can look this up to, to have more on the issue of binding conscience. But this idea of binding conscience is that you can't. Tell somebody, any, anybody, anybody in the family, in the church, or in the government, you, nobody can tell somebody to do something and make them think that it is, it is right or wrong if it is outside of Scripture to bind their conscience. If their conscience is telling them one thing to do, you cannot create rules or create reasons outside of Scripture to Force them to do something that their conscience disagrees with because that is forcing them to sin. And so if a person believes in their heart that getting a vaccine is sinful, and many do for various reasons, for various good reasons, me included, if somebody thinks that and you force them in some way, and, and forcing them could even mean threatening firing them, you know, it doesn't have to be you tie them down and you force a needle in their arm. It could be forcing them through other means, uh, like a mandate, per se. Threatening to fire somebody, uh, threatening to keep them out of public places or restaurants or grocery stores, preventing them from seeing their family, preventing them from entering or leaving the country. All of these things are ways 
that we actually see happening around us all the time of binding consciences. And this is sinful behavior, obviously, clearly. And so anything that binds a person's conscience outside of Scripture, because Scripture nowhere says uh, obey the government no matter what they say, and it also doesn't say you need to get every vaccine that comes out. <laughs> we have we have no guidance on that. Therefore, we cannot create rules that do that. That's another argument. Another reason that we knew this whole time that the that what these people were saying was unfaithful. What these Christians this whole time were saying when they were saying, uh, you have to obey the mandates because that's what Jesus would want you to do. It's totally unfaithfulness. We talked about um, the unlimited power. We talked about conscience, but also the mandates are actually illegal under their own laws, under our countries and, and many other countries' own laws. Uh, if, if, the, if the highest power in a government, um, in our case, the Constitution grants us something like religious liberty or, or freedom of speech um, or other liberties, and then People show up in office and just ignore those rules, ignore those laws. And actually, we see this happening all the time. And they try to impose something on you that's actually not lawful. You have no responsibility to obey those things. Because if you're obeying the law, the law is actually higher than what these lower authorities are telling you to do. And so you could be obedient to them or you could be obedient to the law. And these people in this situation are being disobedient to the law. And that's exactly what we're seeing with these mandates. The mandates, many people have believed, were unlawful this whole time because it breaks all kinds of uh, rules. One being our right to religious liberty. Uh, but, But also, you know, just a lot of people are arguing that, um, or have argued this whole time that a government simply just, no government just has the authority um, even outside of religious liberty, um, it, within the Constitution, just no government has the right to uh, to force a vaccine, uh, force their their country to take a vaccine like this. But now we have one huge, massive, enormous piece of evidence. That these people are nothing but snakes and hypocrites. Verifiably, if all of these things were not were not true enough, now we have proof beyond all shadow of a doubt. And here's the proof. These things are proven to be illegal. The courts, federal courts, recently have shut down the mandates because they are deemed unlawful. It's proof. They've proven it. The courts have said it's unlawful. Now, it's not unlawful because the courts has, have said they're unlawful, but the courts have confirmed what everybody has already known. And then you might say, well, why did it take so long? One, because w- with the broken way our government works right now, <laughs> the the checks and balances that are supposed to be in place between the branches are all off kilter. And so the president can do these executive orders and just make stuff happen instantly. And then if people want to fight against that, uh, especially if um, if many other people in, in other branches of the government uh, want to support those things, it takes a long, long time to stop the president from doing ridiculous things uh, like evil, immoral, illegal orders, uh, executive orders. And so finally, after however long it took, uh, the federal courts have put a pause on these mandates, which means not only is it a new development that it's illegal, it's not a new development, but this simply confirms that these have been illegal this whole time. Now, consider this. What are the evangelicals who are encouraging people to go along with the mandates because we have to obey everything the government says? What are they saying now? And here's what they're saying. Nothing. They're not saying anything. It's total silence. Crickets from these people. Why? Because they don't actually take the Bible seriously. They, this whole time, were saying to you, you need 
to give in to these mandates if you take the Bible seriously. Titus 2, I mean 3, Titus 3, Romans 13, 1 Peter 2. If you want to follow Jesus, your Lord, you have to go get vaccinated. But the courts have confirmed that it's illegal, which means these mandates this whole time were illegal and a faithful Christian didn't have to follow them. And so what are these people saying now? Well, what we are not seeing is repentance. We're not seeing repentance whatsoever. Uh, That's what we should be seeing. We should be seeing repentance from the evangelicals who have been pro-mandate because they think that's what the Bible told them to do this whole time. And we also should be seeing repentance from this huge swath of evangelical elites, people in the Southern Baptist Convention, people like John Piper, uh, arguing from Romans 13 that people should go get a vaccine. Um, And the list goes on. But we're not seeing repentance because the argument that these people were using from the beginning, that if you take the Bible seriously, you should get vaccinated, was a lie. Because they don't actually take the Bible seriously. They were saying to you, you should take the Bible seriously and do what we say because we take the Bible seriously. But in fact, they never took it seriously from the beginning. What happened was they had an agenda and they were wanting to use the Bible as a tool to make you give in to their demands for whatever reason that was. But the reason we know it wasn't is faithfulness. Because if they took the Bible seriously, they would be repenting right now because they would say, ah, I thought these mandates were legal this whole time. If they were legal, then we have to obey what it says, of course. But if they're illegal, I mean, obviously we don't have to obey illegal uh, orders and laws, obviously, because they're not legitimate. They're not laws. It's the same as somebody on the street trying to force you to put a hat on. They just have no authority to do that. That is should be a cut and dry case, easy peasy, but that it's just not what we're seeing. And so what this means is that all of these people, they are snakes, plain and simple. They are deceivers, they are hypocrites. And if there's one kind of person that Jesus really didn't like, it was hypocrites. Woe to you hypocrites, you whitewashed tombs, snakes, you brood of vipers. Jesus had harsh words to say to hypocrites, especially hypocrites who used the law of God to oppress faithful people. Wow. God does not like it when people use his law to oppress righteous people. God does not like that. Uh, just kind of an observation that I made. But I also have a, have another thought that kind of builds on top of this observation uh, that these people have been snakes this whole time. I think, I've been thinking about this and this just popped into my head the other day. I think that this could have been resolved or at least alleviated in a lot of people's lives by having a a deeper knowledge of the civil government and how it works. I had a conversation with a couple of uh, different Christian friends, um, actual sincere Christians. And they, uh, in both cases, they were kind of like, oh, I I just don't really know how the government works. Um, You know, I was trying to explain to them how the Constitution takes precedent over, uh, or like gives authority to the government And if something goes against these higher laws, there's like a hierarchy of laws. And if something goes against these hierarchies of laws, they're uh, illegitimate. And I was explaining this to them, and it makes sense to me. And and these are things not that I've known for a long time, honestly. These are things that I've learned uh, more recently in my life, especially over these past couple of years, because uh, it's important to know these things. But anyway, here is my exhortation for you, the listener. It is important 
to have a strong understanding of the civil government. I think every single Christian American, Canadian, who wherever whatever country you're living in, it is important for you as a Christian to understand how your government works. And here's why. Whenever a great event happens in your life, do you not inform yourself about that event? If you're going to get a dog, my wife and I recently got a dog. He's a puppy. We got him when he was what, seven weeks old, I think? He's uh, he's nine, no, no, no. Yeah, seven weeks old. Um, he's nine weeks old now, almost 10 weeks. And prior to getting this dog, I did a lot of research. I watched a lot of videos on training. Uh, I, I did a lot of reading to know what to expect, to know what kinds of things we need. We got a, a kennel and we got a leash, and we got food, and it was our responsibility to do those things. You know, you can't get a dog and not have food to feed it, right? Whenever you're going to have a baby, it is massively important for you to learn how to raise a baby. Now, some people don't, and those people are doing the wrong thing. It is important for us whenever a great event or a great responsibility is given to us that we know how to deal with that responsibility. Uh, this applies not not only when you're getting a dog or a kid, but uh, in other situations in life too. If you're um, if you get sick, let's say, and, and you have some kind of disease, um, God forbid, but you need to learn, you have a responsibility to learn how to treat your body. In that case, um, there are responsibilities that we have based on the the situations we are in life. So how does this apply to the government? Well, we are citizens of this country. And just because we are citizens, we ought to know how this country works. So why do so many people not know how this country works? I think it's because of the broadness of the responsibility. So here's an example. If you get a fish, let's say, if you get a fish... Uh, that fish is going to impact this much of your life. Very little. But that little tiny bit that that fish impacts is very specific and it's very visible. You know, that fish, it sits in a corner of your room and you have to learn um, a few things like how to clean its tank. You have to get a tank. You have to understand how much food to feed it. Um, But beyond that, that's pretty much all you have to know. But it's very specific what you have to know for a fish. But I think the bigger the thing and the more of your life that it impacts, a fish impacts very little of your life. (laughs) But living as, as a citizen in a country impacts all of your life. Ever, almost every single thing you do, our government impacts in some way. It impacts what you buy, how much you pay, your taxes, your income, your job, uh, you, how many kids you have, if you're married or not, it, it impacts everything. Whenever you travel, if you go to a different state, laws affect these things. Whenever you get into your car, the government impacts everything. And so I think because of the broadness of the impact of the government in our lives, we tend to take it for granted because maybe we don't notice it. Just like we don't we're not constantly aware of the temperature around us or the air pressure or gravity. Now, it's not important, I don't think, to understand uh, air pressure or gravity or the temperature. <laughs> like it is important with the government because the government affects more of our choices. The temperature just affects if we wear a jacket outside and, and it's a lot easier to um, to respond uh, to changes in temperature but with the government the government affects us in huge ways and those those huge ways um we can have also an impact in the government in huge ways uh by the things we we teach our kids uh, by the things we talk about in church uh by the way we raise our families and the relationships we have those things can impact the government and if we can impact 
the government in positive ways, then we can impact our communities and eventually the entire country in positive ways. So this is a big deal, and I think we take it for granted. And so this is why I think every Christian has the responsibility to at least have a cursory knowledge of how our government works, our branches, uh, its history. Oh, it's it's super important to understand our country's history <laughs> because that would prevent uh, people from saying like, oh, well, you, you can't say that judging somebody by their character instead of the color of our skin uh, is racism. Well, because then Martin Luther King Jr. would be racist and he's one of the biggest icons of anti-racism in history. But we don't see any Martin Luther King Jr. statues being torn down or Martin Luther King boulevards being renamed. We don't see that because people are entirely ignorant of history broadly. Uh, yeah. So if you if you don't feel like you know enough about the government, I don't feel like I know enough about the government. Learn more. Read some history books. Add that into your stack of books that you're reading. Um, watch some YouTube videos on history or on uh, how how the government works in general. Whatever. Do whatever you can to learn more, but also know your Bible. Because if you know your Bible and you know how to study it, and you then you will know how to respond to objections like these unfaithful Christians have been posing from the beginning of this lockdown. Saying, you have to give in to the mandate because that's what God wants you to do. No, absolutely not. This is grounded not in a, a desire to love God and take his word seriously, but it is a it is grounded in a desire to do exactly the opposite because they hate God, because they don't want to take the Bible seriously, because they want to twist it for their own means to impose their will on rubes and chumps like you. So don't be one of those chumps. Educate yourself, know your Bible, and be able to resist the tyrants, and the idiots who love the tyrants. God bless.